So, can people hear me? Or do I need to talk louder? So, unlike the previous two presentations that were a little bit more like, here's some brilliant insights that I have to going about youth ministry. I more so just want to share one of the things that I've been struggling with as a youth pastor. And I want to use an illustration from my own youth. And I want to share some of my own thoughts about it. And then just kind of, I don't know, try to spark a good, meaningful discussion and conversation. So if I were to try to summarize what it is I'd like to talk about, it's finding this balance between encouraging our youth to be authentic when they spend time with us and with our youth group. But realizing that means that they may share with us and others that they sinned. And how do we respond to that reality? So an example for myself, a few weeks ago I ran a sleepover at our church for all the high school kids. And about 15 minutes after the sleepover started, this one girl came in who's in grade 11. And I've known this girl since she was in grade 6. She started coming out to an after school program that our church runs. Her, she lives with her grandpa because her mom died when she was in grade two, and her dad's not really involved in the picture at all. She doesn't have any sort of church or faith background, um, but she's been coming out to our youth group fairly regularly and would be one of the youth that I'd identify as one of the kind of the core members of our youth group. About six months ago, um, she decided that she really wanted to start changing the way that she lives her life. Her life over the last couple of years, as she started into high school, um, she got involved in, in drinking a little bit, started getting involved in doing drugs a little bit, and as the years have progressed and she's challenged with her own insecurities, with her own struggles within peer groups, with her own difficulties facing the fact that she doesn't really have parents, um, that little bit has gone to, you know, getting drunk at least once or twice a week. To the point where probably more nights out of a week than not, she is either high or drunk. And she knows that that's not what God wants for her, and she shared that with me. And she wants to change, but the problem is all of her friends, that's what they do. So she comes into the sleepover, and I can just tell she's upset. And you know sometimes when like your youth are upset, and you're not sure whether you should ask them how they are, or maybe you're like, I'll just leave it, and hope that it gets better. I said, hey, are you all right? She just burst into tears. So I like, took her out of the main room and into the hallway and left the other youth doing their thing with some of my volunteer leaders. And I said, what's, what's, what's going on? And she just started sobbing. Like those like heaving sobs and snot everywhere. And there's like a young male youth pastor kind of like, what's going on? Um, <laughs> and she shared with me that she'd been looking forward to the sleepover all week. And she intentionally worked so hard all week to make sure that she wasn't having anything to drink and she wasn't going to do any drugs all week long. She's really looking forward to the, to the youth event. And one of her friends even said that she might come with her. And she's really excited and hoping that her friend might come with her in a sleepover event at the church. So she went to her friend's house to pick her up on the way. And discovered that her friend had, had invited a bunch of other friends over. They were already a couple drinks in. And they said, no, you got to stay with us. Don't go to that church. Said, no, I got to go to the church. Are you still coming with me? I guess not, eh? No, okay. And he said that then her friends just started hurling insults at her. Calling her all kinds of, and not just like, oh, you churchy, you Bible person, like, cut to the core of who you are. Words. And she said, I got, you know, I, I gotta go, but she's also, I'm sure, fighting her own security, and she said, okay, I'll stay for a few drinks, but then I've really gotta go to this church sleepover. And I'm trying to figure, okay, how am I gonna, when she finishes telling me the story, what am I gonna say? And she turns to me and she says, and I know that your rule is that we're not allowed to come to the church if we've been drinking or we're high. Like, we're not allowed to stay. In, and I know that you have to send me home because those are the rules. And I've had a few drinks. And I'm honestly, I'm a little bit drunk right now. And I need to leave. And I know you have to send me home. But I'm not going to go home. I'm going to go back.
back to that party, and that's where I'm going to spend the night. But I want to spend it here, and I've just screwed up so bad. I'm just sitting there going, okay. What do I, what do, I do? What do I say? How do I respond to this girl in this moment? And I think, I'm going to hit the pause button on that story. I think this is something that we, if we're doing youth ministry well, we will struggle with on a regular basis. Maybe not to that extreme. But we're constantly finding ourselves, I'm constantly finding myself, dealing with wanting to be authentic in my own spirituality, in my own spiritual journey, and I'm creating a space for my youth to be able to do the same. But I also know that we're called to, like, pursue holiness and righteousness. We're supposed to extend grace, and we're supposed to extend mercy, but justice is an important thing too. And I know that there's like this big theological discussion that happens here, and obviously I'm not going to tackle that in 10 minutes of conversation. Um, but I think in little ways we start encountering these things in our youth ministry. So we might have a youth that tells us when we're up for coffee with them that they cheated on the test. I had one of my youth telling me the other day that um, he's got his first ever part-time job. He's going door-to-door -door selling subscriptions for the Hamilton Spectator. But as he was telling me a little bit more about this, and I was asking a bit more about his pitch, he told me that, like, he kind of fudges some of the facts. He tells them that they only have to pay for the subscription for the first three months, and then it cancels unless, you know, they call and ask it to extend. He says, but that doesn't really happen. It just keeps going unless they call and have it canceled. And then the guy that runs this you know, it's kind of ahead of the team, um, who's a high school kid himself in grade 12, told them that if they seem like they have a sale, but then all of a sudden, kind of the last minute, the person seems to be backing out, to try just telling them that half the money that uh, they spend on their uh, subscription actually goes to their uh, school's hockey team. Which is an out and out lie. Like, just a total lie. And so as youth pastors, we find ourselves in those conversations, and we have to figure out how to respond. So some of those situations, you might say, well, that's easy. You say, you shouldn't cheat. You shouldn't lie to people that you don't know that you're selling newspapers to. Maybe those, maybe those seem easy to us. But we also know that we've had questions that are more difficult, more challenging, like this one that, that I had with my youth. I think one of my concerns is that as a youth pastor, if I constantly am kind of showing them all these good things that they need to do, and I'm constantly telling them that these are all the bad things that they shouldn't be doing, it becomes really easy for a high school student to get this image of Christianity that a Christian is someone who is a perfect person. They are someone that never, ever makes mistakes. But the reality is that those of us sitting here those that lead ministries in our churches and congregations are sinners. Guaranteed, some of the people in this room struggle with lying on a regular basis. We struggle with insecurity that leads us to say things that aren't true. Some of us in this room struggle with pornography. We wouldn't be surprised if at least one person in this room has struggled either currently or struggled in the past with some sort of substance abuse. So how do I respond to this girl that is struggling with her own sinful nature, but is truly trying to change the way she lives? And I'm not trying to say, that, okay, here's this brilliant thing that I came up with. I literally just sat there and was like, God, I need your help so much right now. So I shared with her, I just said, you know, I believe that God is glad that you are here right now. I am glad that you are here at the sleepover. I'm disappointed in some of the decisions you made tonight. But the overall, I'm glad that you've gotten to where you are at this moment. Can I pray for you right now? Yeah. Can you see if so and so's here yet? I'm like, oh, I know that they're not here yet. But do you want me to see if there's maybe some other youth that might want to pray with you? I got like two of the other youth and we went up in the hallway and I 
just shared like the briefest Gantis report on what was going on in her life um, and just asked him to pray. And these two high school kids just started praying for this girl. Praying about how glad and like, you know, you know how when we pray, but sometimes we like pray and we kind of like pray to God, but sometimes we get into that role of like talking to the person that we're praying for while we're praying. Maybe that's right, maybe that's not, I don't know. But my youth just started doing that and basically encouraging this girl that they were happy that she was there. And coming out of that, it made me really ask myself, is my youth group a place where I create a space that sinners are welcome to enter into community and to meet before God and struggle through what it means to be a Christian together? Or is my youth group a place that's really only welcome to those that are willing to pretend that they have it all together? That happened a few weeks ago. I don't still figuring that out. I'm still sorting through it. Um, but I feel like it's a really important thing for us to consider as we're building spaces and creating events and creating atmospheres 